And as dudes, we're lazy. And as lazy dudes, when it comes time for us to handle cooking for a potluck, we usually let our apathy do the cooking. <laughs> Which means for most of us, that means searching through the cupboards for a mostly full box of Triscuits. I know, we suck. But there are those of you out there who want to make a good impression at a church potluck, but you just don't know how to do that. Well, we've pulled churchgoers from all across America and come up with some pretty helpful hints on what to bring to a potluck. We're focusing mainly on main dishes, so won't you join us and come along on this journey of deliciousness. Come along with me. If it's your first time bringing a main dish to a potluck, you might be overly ambitious. I am the master chef. I am Gordon Ramsay. I am the winner of Hell's Kitchen. I am the kitchen nightmare. Bow before my mighty spatula. Let me shut that down right now. You suck. Sure, you made things that didn't burn on occasion, but you know, Master Chef, and calm down before you wet yourself. This is not a place to get creative. Nobody wants to try your glazed fish head polenta with horseradish, honey reduction sauce, and a light vinaigrette. That sounds disgusting. You should be ashamed for even suggesting that, sicko. Exactly. Keep things simple. Things that people like. Lasagna, hot dogs, hamburgers, casseroles. I know, it's boring, you may whine. Yeah, it's boring, but it's also delicious. Tasty, desired, expected. Look, this is not a place to get out of your comfort zone, okay? We're not guinea pigs. Don't try out your experiments on us. We are not lab rats. We are human beings. So stick to common potluck staples, some of which vary by region. Pasta, lasagna, spaghetti, stuffed shells, mac and cheese. Mexican, bean burritos, taco casserole, build your own tacos, chips and queso. Meats. Grilled burgers, hot dogs, corn dogs, chicken brisket barbecue, casseroles. Uh, well, this is a little different. I mean, you can pretty much make a casserole out of anything. People are going to eat it. I know, and I'm not sure why that is. It's like the least transparent of all the dishes, yet very few ever question it. Really, the only rule of making a good casserole is just to cover it in lots and lots of cheese. You know, in fact, that could pretty much work for anything that you bring. Cheese it up. You know, maybe even after all of our put downs and dream crushing, you still want to try something outside the box? I can't believe you weren't listening to me earlier. You are not special. No. Stop it. Bad human. You will bring a potluck staple. Please do not make us say this again. We will come to your house and slap you personally. We cannot be any clearer than this. So even if we've convinced you to stick to a potluck staple, you might still get that spark in your brand that says, in your brand. Do you, you, get, brand? Do you get a spark in your brand? Because brand puts a spark in me. All right. Okay. So, even if we convinced you to stick to a potluck staple, you might still get that spark in your brain that says, Hey, maybe I need to stick a little A1 sauce in the mac and cheese for a nice meaty kick. Well, first off, I would probably try that. But secondly, it would probably be disgusting. The truth is, people who come to potlucks expect a certain transparency to their food. Let me read to you a little story from my own life. Because I was busy handling some technical junk in the sound booth, I was a bit late to the potluck. By the time I got there, most of the good food was gone. But then, someone pointed me towards the back table, which was largely untouched. There, right in front, was a giant pan of baked spaghetti. <clears throat> the top layer of melted cheese called to me, but I was confused. Even though this dish had been out for at least 45 minutes, Barely any of it had been taken. As I dug my large spoon in and began to extract a more than generous helping, I saw the saddest thing I had ever seen. Tons and tons of cut up 
squash. Squash in baked spaghetti. What a sad day in America. I wept for the world. I knelt in prayer right then and there. How can such a travesty even exist? I thought. It even made me question my faith a little. How could a loving God allow something so terrible to happen? Alas, I was stuck with some wavy lays and a cold hot dog. And that ruined my whole day. You see, I had an expectation. I heard baked spaghetti, and I thought noodles, sauce, maybe some beef, and lots of mozzarella. Instead, I got someone's attempt Make everyone love squash. <laughs> it'll be, it's, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Don't mess with people's expectations. They'll stop trusting food. They'll stop trusting people. They'll stop trusting the world. The world will become a darker, sadder, meaner place. Babies will cry. You want to be responsible for making the world a darker place? Then stop putting bell peppers in your hamburger mix. Stop pre-dressing your salads. Stop the insanity! Just make something good, something delicious, and make plenty of it to go around. Look, sometimes we just can't cut it. Sometimes our food burns. Sometimes we get scared. Sometimes our taste testers get food poisoning and die. I get it. Let us let you in on a little secret that few people seem to realize. There's no rule that says you have to cook the thing that you bring. That's exactly right. Bring pizza from Domino's. Bring chicken from KFC. Bring a bunch of chili dogs from Wiener Stencil. I mean, people love that stuff and it'll go fast. Sometimes getting takeout is the best cooking. If you want to be a successful, thriving church, you need to master the art of the potluck. And while everybody loves the standard no frills, just come and eat kind of potluck, we know that eventually you're going to want to spice things up with a theme. And of course, choosing what to bring to a potluck is difficult, assuming that you bring anything at all, you big hairy moocher. So today, we're going to teach you how to potluck like a pro.